There's a website called Human Benchmark where you can test things like your reaction time, memory, aim trainer. I'm gonna test my typing speed. All right, here goes. Ah, no! No! Let's go! Okay, so I got 65 words per minute. And what I want to talk about here is what does this percentile mean? So I got 72.7%. Let's call that 73%. So what does a 73 percentile mean? The website told me that my score of 65 words per minute is the 73rd percentile. What does that mean? Percentiles tell you what percent is below. So 73rd percentile means that 73% of the data, or in this case, 73% of all typing speeds are below 65 words per minute. Once again, percentiles tell you what percent is below. Another way to interpret this is to say that my typing speed is higher than 73% of everybody who took this typing test, which means that I'm faster than 73% of everybody who took this typing test. Other places where you may see percentiles. If you take any standardized test like the SAT or the ACT, when you get your score, you'll also get a percentile score. Say you got a percentile score of 80th percentile. What does that mean? That means that of all the test, take, test takers, 80% scored below you. In other words, you scored better than 80% of all the test takers. Another place where you may see percentiles is at the doctor's office. The doctor may say, your child's height is at the 70th percentile. What does that mean? That means that of all the kids that age, 70% have height below your child. In other words, your child is taller than 70% of all the kids that age. On the rest of this page, I have the directions for how to calculate percentiles. Let me jump to example one and come back to this page when we actually need it. Example one, here we have the ages of passengers on an airplane. Part A says find the 30th percentile. If we go back to the front page, there's two sets of directions. There's a set of directions for finding the peak percentile, and then there's another set of directions for finding the percentile of a given data value. What I mean by finding the peak percentile are questions like, find the 30th percentile. So for part A, find the 30th percentile, we should be following that first set of directions. Step one says, order the data from smallest to largest. If I look at my data, it looks like it's already ordered from smallest to largest. So step one's good. Step two says, let n be the total number of data values. Calculate the location, this. So we'll calculate this. Now the formula has p over 100 times n. What's p? p is our percentile. So we're looking for the 30th percentile. So it's gonna be 30 over 100 times n, what's n? n is the total number of data values. So how many data values do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So there's 10 in each row, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. That means there are 70 total data values. And let's calculate this. 30 over 100, times 70, and I get 21. We're not done. 
Remember, there were three steps, and we only did step two. So step two was finding this L. Step three, if L is a whole number, do this. If L is not a whole number, do this. L here is 21, which is a whole number, which means we'll do the first part. If L is a whole number, then the pth percentile is the average of the data values in position L and position L plus one. Okay, so what that means is we're gonna look for the data values in position L, which is 21, and position L plus one, so 21 plus one, 22. And I wanna look for the data values that are, are in position 21 and position 22. And what that means is we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, and figure out which one is the 21st data value. So there's 10 in each, in each row here, so that's 10, 20, 21. So the 21st data value is the 29, and the 22nd data value is 31. And the directions are telling us we need to average those two data values. So to average, add them up, divide by two. So 29 plus 31 on top, divided by two. And I get 30. So the 30th percentile is 30. So that's just a coincidence that they're, they're equal. Write a sentence interpreting your answer. So percentile tells you what percent is below the data value. So the interpretation I want you to write is something like approximately 30% of the data is below 30. The 30% came from the 30th percentile is below 30. This 30 came from this 30. Okay, so it's just a unfortunate coincidence that they're both the same. Let's try part B. Part B says find the 66 percentile. Okay, so we should be still be using the first set of directions, right? First set of directions is for things like find the 30th percentile or find the 66 percentile. Directions say step one, order from smallest to largest. That's good. Step two, calculate this L thing. Okay, P over 100. P is our percentile, so it's 66 in this case, times n. n, once again, is the number of data values. We counted already. We said there were 70 total. So let's calculate this. 66 over 100 times 70. 46.2. We're not done, right? That, that was only step two, there's three steps. So step three says if L is a whole number, do this. If L is not a whole number, do this. L here is 46.2, not a whole number. So this one, we'll do the second part. If, if L is not a whole number, then round it up, right? You're always rounding it up to the next higher whole number. So we're gonna round 46.2 up to 47. So this isn't regular rounding, you're always rounding up here, 47. And then it says the p percentile is the data value in position corresponding to the rounded up value. So we're just gonna find the number that's in position 47. And we said that there was 10 in each row, so that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. 38. So number in position 47, and it was 38. Interpretation, okay? The percentile tells you what percent is below the data value. So approximately 66% of the data is below Thirty-eight. 
Part C. Find the percentile of a passenger who is 44 years old. Now, here, we want to find a percentile of one of these ages. Okay, so this is the second set of directions where it says find the percentile of a given data value. So we're given the 44 age, which is the data value, and we want to find what percentile is this. Second set of directions say, step one, order the data from smallest to largest. Okay, that's already done. Step two, let X be the given data value. Our X here is the 44. And then we're going to calculate that percentile. And it says number of data values less than X. In our case, it's number of data values less than 44. So we're going to count how many data values are less than 44, which is all of these all the way up to that 42. So less than means we don't include 44. Okay, so I'm gonna count how many numbers are less than this 44. So there's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. So 54 numbers, 54 data values that are less than 44. So that's 54 data values that's less than our 44. On the bottom, it says total number of data values. We said it was 70. And then there was a times 100 over there. So 54 over 70 times 100. Okay, and I get 77.143. Now, very last sentence there does say round the result to the nearest whole number. So this is regular rounding, rounded to the nearest whole number, 77.143. We'll look at the one that's below, uh, if it's five or more, you're going to bump it up. If it's four or less, you're going to leave it alone. It is four or less, so it's going to round to 77. So the 77 percentile is 44. The interpretation percentile, remember, tells you what percent is below. The interpretation here would be 77% of the data, approximately 77% of the data, is below the data value. So it's below 44. Let me pause here and give a little disclaimer. So when we found the percentile that corresponded to that 44, we counted the number of data values less than 44. Okay, and I said don't include the 44. So for this class, that's how we're going to find the percentile. Now there are other textbooks that say include the 44. And then there's even other textbooks that say you count how many is less, but then for the 44s, you count those as half, okay? So there's multiple ways of finding percentiles and they're all correct. For this class though, when we're counting, don't include the 44. Second disclaimer, I'm gonna write this generic uh, interpretation for all of my interpretations. I'm just gonna change the percent and I'm gonna change the data value. And that's okay for this class. Now, I could write a better sentence that actually matches the, the situation here. The data here represents the ages of passengers. So a better sentence would be to say approximately 30% of the passengers have age below 30. Approximately 66% of the passengers are younger than 38. Approximately 77% of the passengers have ages that are less than 44, right? Those are better sentences that match the actual situation. But for this class, if you write just this generic sentence, that's fine too. There are special percentiles called quartiles. And the word quartiles just comes from the word quarter. And a quarter is 25 cents. The first quartile is just the 25th percentile. Second quartile, two quarters. Two quarters is 50 cents. The second quartile is the 50th percentile.
third quartile, three quarters, three quarters is 75 cents. So third quartile is the 75th percentile. And the way you calculate these is exactly the same as what we did in parts A and B, where we found the 30th percentile and the 66th percentile. So let's find these. To find the 25th percentile, we're going to use the first set of directions. Step one, order the data from smallest to largest. That's done. Step two, calculate this L, which L, by the way, stands for the location. P over 100, P is the percentile we're looking for. So we're looking for the 25th percentile, so 25 over 100 times N. N is the number of data values. So we're talking about the same data set. Um, and we said that there are 70 of them. So 25 over 100 times 70. Seventeen point five. We're not done because that was just step two. Step three, if L is a whole number, do this. If L is not a whole number, do this. L here, 17.5 is not a whole number, so we're gonna do the second one. So L is not a whole number, then round it up to the next higher whole number. So we're gonna round up. To 18. And then, the P percentile is the data value in the position corresponding to the rounded up value. So we're going to look for the number that's in position 18. Position 18. There's 10 in each row, so that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 29. So 29 is our Q1. Second quartile, we're going to do exactly the same thing, except with 50 uh, as our P. So first thing we'll do is L equals, instead of 25, it's going to be 50 over 100 times 70. 50 over 100 times 70. 35. We're not done. That was just step two. Step three says, if L is a whole number, do this. L is not a whole number, do that. L here, 35, is not a whole is a whole number. So this time we'll do the first part. So if L is a whole number. Then the P percentile is the average of the data values in position L and position L plus one. So this one, when is the whole number? We're going to look for the values in position L and position L plus one, which is the next one, 36. All right, so look for the numbers in position 35 and 36. 10 in each row, so that's 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So 35 is the 31, and 36 is the 34. So I want those two numbers, 31 and 34. Now, step three says, once you find those two numbers, we're going to average those. So add them up, divide by 2. So 31 plus 34 over 2. On top, 31 plus 34. On the bottom, 2. 32.5. And that's our Q2. Q3 which is 75th percentile, same thing. P over 100, our P here is now 75, times N, number of data values, we count 70. 75 over 100 times, uh, times 70. 52.5. Okay, that was only step two. Step three, if L is a whole number, do this. L is not a whole number, which is what we have here. If L is not a whole number, round it up to the next higher whole number. So we're going to round up. Uh, 
to 53. And then we're just going to look for the data value in position 53. And that will be our answer. So position 53. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51, 52, 53, 41. And that is our Q3. Now, I didn't ask for interpretations on these, but if I asked you for interpretations, okay, 25th percentile is 29, the interpretation would be 25% of the data is below 29. 50% of the data is below 32.5. 75% of the data is below 41. Now, let me focus here on the second quartile. 50% of the data is below 32.5. Okay, 50%, half. So we're saying half of the data is below 32.5. We talked about something similar before. Remember when we talked about median, the median is the middle number, right? It's the middle number in the sense that half of the data is above and half of the data is below, right? Half of the data below, 50% below. Second quartile or 50th percentile is really just the median, okay? Second quartile is the median. Which is the same thing as saying the 50th percentile. So now that we have this formula for L, right? When you find a 50th percentile, you're really finding the median. So this L formula now gives you a way to get directly to the middle number. Now that we found some percentiles, we found the 25th percentile, 50th percentile, 75th percentile, and in parts A and B, we found the 30th percentile and the 66th percentile. You might be wondering why there's those two situations in step three. Why sometimes you have to find two numbers and average them, and why sometimes you round up and just find a single number in that position. And the reason has to do with the same reason why when we found median, there was two situations. There was a situation where there's a number right smack in the middle, and then there was a situation where there's two numbers in the middle and we had to average them. That's why. All right, back to quartiles. The next thing I wanna compute is the interquartile range or IQR. The interquartile range is just Q3 minus Q1. And in our case here, Q3 was 41. Q1 was 29. 41 minus 29. It's 12. So 12 is the IQR or interquartile range. The lower outlier boundary is start with Q1 and subtract 1.5 IQR. So Q1 in our case was 29 minus 1.5 IQR. Our IQR was 12. So 1.5 times 12. 29 minus 1.5 times 12. It's 11. Okay, I'm going to call this the lower outlier boundary. Upper outlier boundary, <clears throat> similar thing, except you start with Q3, right, which is the upper quartile, and instead of minus, plus. Q3 in our case was 41 plus 1.5 times our IQR. Our IQR was 12. 41 plus 1.5 times 12. Fifty-nine. And this is the upper outlier boundary. All 
Now these lower and upper outlier boundaries have significance because they help us determine what's considered an outlier, right? That's why they're called the outlier boundaries. So any numbers in your data that is below the lower or above the upper is considered an outlier. So any data values that are below 11 or above 59 are considered outliers. Let's start with the below. Is there any data values that are below 11? Yes, 8, 10. So 8 and 10 are considered outliers. So list any outliers, 8 and 10. So those are the outliers that are below the 11. And any number that's above 59 is also an outlier. So any numbers that are ab above 59. So do we have any data values above 59? Yes, 62, 70, 85. So those three are considered outliers also. 62, 70, 85. Okay, so these numbers are considered outliers. Uh, you, won't all, you won't always have outliers um, in your data set, but if you have anything that's below the lower outlier boundary or above the upper outlier boundaries, those would be considered outliers. A term that you often hear is the five number summary of data. And the five numbers we're talking about is the, the minimum, Q1, Q2, Q3, and the maximum. So let's find the five number summary of our data. So same data, we're talking about the ages of passengers on a plane. The minimum, which is the smallest number. So what's the smallest number in my data? Eight. Q1, Q2, Q3, we found on our previous page, Q1 is 29, Q2 is 32.5, Q3 was 41. 29, 32.5, 41. Max, that's the biggest value in my data. The biggest value in my data is 85. And the type of plot that displays this data is called a box plot. So to draw my box plot, I'm going to first make an axis. And so this x axis needs to be um, display all, all the data from the minimum all the way to maximum. So I need to go from 8 all the way up to 85. I'm going to count by, by tens and I'll start with zero. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And my data here is the ages of passengers on a plane. So these are gonna represent ages. It's called a box plot. So we should be drawing a box. And the box comes from Q1, Q2, and Q3. So Q1, 29, which is right here. Q2, 32.5, somewhere right here. Q3, 41, which is right somewhere here. So that's Q1, Q2, Q3. So that's gonna form my box. And that's my box. So this is supposed to be Q1, this is supposed to be Q2, and this is supposed to be Q3. Let me actually write the, uh, the numbers also. So Q1 here is uh, 29, Q2 is 32.5, and Q3 is 41. Sometimes box plots are called box and whisker plots because there's going to be whiskers that come out of the sides. And these whiskers have to do with the lower outlier boundary and the upper outlier boundary, which in this case is going to be the 11 and the 59. Now, it's not going to go out to 11 and 59. So the way you find where it goes out to is 
go back to my data. 11 and 59. So where's, where's 11 in my data? I don't have 11 in my data. So 11 is somewhere between this 10 and this 21. 59, I don't have my data either. either. The 59 is between this 55 and this 62. So what you do is the lower outlier boundary, which is the 11, you're gonna go up to the next data value, which will be a 21. The upper outlier boundary, you're gonna go down to the next data value, which will be the 55. And those are where you're gonna draw the whiskers to. 21 on the low side, 55 on the high side, okay? So we're gonna go, the whiskers gonna go 21 on the low side, which is right here. And 55 on the high side, which is right here. So once again, the whiskers have to do with the lower and upper outlier boundaries, but you don't go directly to them on your picture. Find out where they are on your data, which in our case was between the 10 and 21 and between the 55 and the 62. And then what you do is the lower you go up to the next data value, the upper you go down. So basically you're gonna go in, right? The lower you go up, the upper you go down to the next uh, data value. And those will be where you draw your whiskers to. And then the only thing left is the outliers. The outliers, 8, 10, 62, 70, 85. We're gonna indicate those with little X's. So eight and 10, here's 10. Eight is right next to it. And then on the high side, we had 62, 70, and 85. 62, 70, and 85. And that's a box plot. Now a box plot tells you, or it breaks up your data into 25%. And what I mean by this is, where should I draw this? I'll draw it up here. Left of the box to the middle of the box. So left of the box here to the middle of the box is 25% of your data. Middle of the box to the right side of the box is 25% of your data. Right side of the box all the way to, the, to your max which is this 85, is 25% of the data. Left side of your box all the way to your minimum is another 25% of your data. And now we're gonna answer these questions. Part A, from your box plot, the middle 50% of the passengers are between what two ages? So I have 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. I'm talking about the middle 50%. So the middle 50% would be these two 25s in the middle, right? That makes 50% in the middle. And is saying that the middle 50% is between the ages of 29 and 41. So 29 and 41. Part B, from your box plot, the oldest 25% of passengers are between what two ages? Oldest, meaning the highest age, so the highest 25%, which would be this, right? That's the highest 25%, is between 41 and 85. So remember, when you do the highest 25% and the lowest 25%, also include your outliers. Don't, don't just go and stop at the, at the whisker, right? Go all the way to your max, and then go all the way to your minimum. Part C, from your box plot, the youngest 25% of passengers are between what two ages? Youngest, meaning lowest age, lowest 25%, this is the lowest 25%, between eight, and 29, right? So it goes all the way up to the left side of the box. 
28 and 29. Part D from your box plot is the shape of the, of the distribution skewed left, skewed right, or approximately symmetric. And the answer to this, we'll need the next page. Determining the shape of data from a box plot. Now on a box plot, there is a lower box and an upper box. There is a lower whisker and an upper whisker. Basically, if the lower box is bigger or the lower whisker is longer, skewed left. If the upper box is bigger or the upper whisker is longer, skew right. If both boxes are about the same and both whiskers are about the same length, symmetric. So let's go back and answer part D. Here's our box plot. If I look at my two boxes, the right box, which is the upper box, is definitely bigger. If I look at my two whiskers, the upper whisker is definitely longer. So this would be skewed right. Example two, the ages of a sample of trees in a park are summarized in a box plot below. Here's the box plot. Part A, find the following quantities, minimum, maximum, median, 75th percentile. Now on a box plot, remember the box consists of Q1, Q2, and Q3. So here's Q1, the left side of the box, the middle of the box is Q2, and the right side is Q3. And remember that Q1 just means the 25th percentile, Q2 is the 50th percentile, and Q3 just means the 75th percentile. Minimum. Minimum is the lowest number in your data, so it's the lowest number that you see on your graph. It's 5. Maximum, the highest number, 85. Median, okay, median, remember, median is the same thing as saying the 50th percentile. Which is the same thing as saying Q2. Q2 is 72. 75th percentile is the same thing as Q3, and Q3 is 78. Part B. What percent of the trees is below the age of 72? Now this is where we need to know about how box plot works. So box plot breaks up your data into 25%, right? Starting with the box. Left side of the box to the middle is 25%. Middle box to the right side of the box is another 25%. Right side of the box all the way to the right of your graph is another 25%. Left side of the box all the way to the left of your graph, which includes all the outliers also, is another 25%. So to answer the question, what percent of trees is below 72? Where's 72? 72 is right here. Below is what percent? Below is the 25% and then another 25% for a total of 50%. The youngest 25% of trees is between what two ages? So youngest meaning lowest age, lowest 25%, which is this first 25%, is between five and 57. The oldest 25% of tree ages is between what two values? Oldest meaning Highest, the highest 25% is the last 25% is between 78 and 85. The middle 50%, so middle 50% would be the two 25s in the middle, right? That would make 50. So the middle 50% is between 57 and 78. Part F, 
Do you expect the mean to be greater than, less than, or approximately equal to the median? So the first question I want to ask is, is this box plot skewed left, skewed right, or symmetric? So remember, look at the two boxes and look at the two whiskers. Whichever side is longer is the direction of the skew. Left box is bigger, left whisker is bigger, this would be skewed left, okay? Doesn't answer my question yet, but right now I can say it's skewed left. And what do I know about skewed left? So if we go back to what we talked about when we talked about mean and medians, remember we said if it's skewed right, the mean is to the right of the median. If it's skewed left, the mean is to the left of the median. So skewed left means that the mean is to the left. And on a number line, being to the left means that you are less, right? So mean is less. Example three, according to the National Center for Health Statistics, the median height for 20 year old males is 69.5 inches, the 10th percentile is 66 inches, and the 95th percentile is 74 inches. What does this mean? Let me draw a picture of what's, uh, what this is saying. We're talking about heights, so we're talking about inches. So let me put these inches on a number line. So I have 69.5 inches, 66 inches, 74 inches. 66 is going to be the smallest, so that would go first. And then 69.5. And then 74. And these are all inches. It says the median is 69.5 inches. What does that mean? Median, remember, means 50th percentile. And what does 50th percentile mean? 50th percentile means that 50% is below 69.5. So let me draw this like this. Okay, so 50% of the data is below 69.5. The 10th percentile is 66. What does that mean? That means that 10% is below 66. Let me draw that like this. 10%. Below. The 95th percentile is 74. That means that 95% is below 74. And now we can answer these questions by just staring at this picture. Part A. What percent of 20 year old males have height less than 66 inches? 66 less to the left, what percent is to the left? Well, the picture tells us that 10% is to the left. So it's just 10%. What percent of 20 year old males have height greater than 74? Here's 74. Greater would be to the right. So it's asking what percent is to the right? Well, I know that 95% is to the left. So what percent is to the right? If I know 95% is to the left, then the rest of the percent is to the right. What's the rest of the percent? And how would you find it? So the total is going to be 100%, right? So everything is 100%. If I know 95% is to the left, to get the other side, do 100% minus 95. And we get 5%. So in general, that's true. If you know the percent to the left, to get the percent on the other side, all you need to do is 100 minus whatever that percent is. Part C. What percent of 20 year old males have height between 66 and 69.5? So what percent is between? And how, how would we find it? Well, if I, I wanna know what percent is between, I know 50% is to the left of the 69.5. I know 10% is to the left of 66, right? 
15% to the left of 6945, 10% to the left of 66. If I subtract those, that should give me the percent right there, which is the one I want. So 50% minus 10% will give me the percent in the middle. So 50% minus 10%. is 40%. And in general, that's true also. If you know the percent to the left of 66, and you know the percent to the left of 69.5, to get the percent between, subtract the two percents. Part D, what percent of 20-year-old males have height between 66 and 74? So once again, between, subtract. I know that 95% is to the left 74, and I know that 10% is to the left of 66. So if I just subtract those two percents, so 95% minus 10% should give me the percent between. 95% minus 10% is 85%. And that's percentiles and box plots. Have a great day. See you next time.